Acts, Acts chapter number 14. Children's Church. Have any of you ever felt like in your life that you felt like you got down? You felt down in your spirit, uh, in your emotion. Uh, you know, none of us like to feel the painful emotion of feeling down. Probably, I think that everyone in here, if you were transparent this morning would say that there has been a time in your life where you felt down, you felt the emotion of that. And so uh, the capacity of feeling down makes us feel hopeless, it makes us feel helpless. Uh, it, 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 it may be something that we're struggling with financially, it may be something that we struggle with in our health. It may be a relationship, it may be a job, it may be discouragement because we've been mistreated or, 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 or maybe uh, not just mistreated, but, but, but we feel a sense of rejection on some level, whatever it may be, but, but, but that, that, that feeling of feeling down, uh, feeling like you are down, uh, whatever the case, uh, I, I, I want us to think about this. When you are feeling down, what are we going to do? Now, obviously, the thing that I'm going to tell you you need to do is you need to get up. Uh, you need to get up. But, but what does God's Word say on it when we look at feeling down and how we're going to respond to, to those times where we're feeling down? That emotional part of us that can be painful, the emotional part of us uh, that, that, that it's difficult. Well, I want to look at the Word of God. I want to look at what God says. I want to look at what the example of a man of God from the Word of God did when he was feeling down. And I think you'll be able to relate and understand. And we're going to look at his life. And, and, and what was it in Paul's life when, when he felt down? What is it that gave him the stamina, the courage, the ability to be able to get back up? It's important to get up. God wants us to get up. So whether you're there or whether this is knowledge just to tuck in your, 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 your little information sack uh, that, that someday in your little files you can go back through and you say, well, Brother Seville said something that when we're feeling down, how do we get back up? What does God say? How does God help us get back up in that emotional time where, where we're at? I like what the Word of God says in Acts chapter number uh, 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 14, verse number 6. The Bible says... They were aware, uh, they, they were made aware of it, uh, and fled to Lystria and Dark Derby, the cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lies round about. And there they preached the gospel. So here it is, there's Paul, there's Barnabas, they're preaching the gospel around Lystria and Derby. And uh, verse number 8 says, And there sat a certain man at Lystria, uh, uh, impotent in his feet, being crippled uh, from his mother's womb, who had never walked. So here's this man, Brother David, he's never walked before. From the time he was born, he was born crippled. And, and, and so uh, the Bible says that when they saw him, uh, they, the same heard Paul speak, and as he's hearing him speak, whether it's in the town square or wherever, who had steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. I love this. And so here it is. Paul is preaching. Here's a man who is handicapped. He's crippled. He's lame. And there's something that when he hears the word of Paul preaching that they come together. Don't you love how the, uh, the Holy Ghost orchestrates? 
orchestrates folks to come together at the right time and when faith is given and God works in mysterious ways as the Holy Ghost places things that are to be. Don't think that your life is lived haphazardly. When you live for God and you desire to do what's right, the Holy Ghost is leading you and He's going to take you to the right place. And so here it is. He, 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 he hears about uh, Christ and, and faith grows and, and, and he believes uh, that, that he's able to be he, uh, healed. Verse number 10, it said with a loud voice, Paul said, stand straight on your feet. Amen. Right here he is in front of everybody. And he leaped and he walked. Here is immediate healing of a man who had faith and believed. And Paul prayed over him. And the working of God's Spirit is ministry. And this man, however old he is, who had never walked before, gets up and he begins to leap and he begins to run. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that must have been like to see someone who you've watched them be carried, that they're handicapped, and all of a sudden they're healed, and the capacity for their walking isn't with some type of physical therapy, amen, but it's immediately there where there was atrophy of, of muscles on bones. Now there is strength, and there is that, that, that inclination of knowing not just how to walk, but knowing how to run when he's never, ever taken even a baby step before. So here he is leaping and he's walking. How amazing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? What if that was your child? What if that was your sibling? What if that was your cousin or your friend? Someone, and you heard the word of God preached and you see evidence of God's healing. Hey, the, the stirring, the excitement. Can you imagine? I, I, how town is. The buzzing of, of, of the noise and, and, and everybody wanting to see but it brought with it its problems. Any of you ever been escalated in life and your emotions only to have the bottom drop out? <whistles> Feeling down. Well, let's look at this. And when the people saw what Paul had, had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Wow. So here are these folks in Lyconia. They had this Greek mythology that believes gods, uh, not just one God, Jesus Christ, but many gods come down and dwell among the people in this human form. And so they think Paul is a God because he's preached the message of Jesus Christ. He's seen the Holy Ghost working and moving, and someone's life has been touched and healed. And the Bible says that they called uh, 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 Barnabas Ju uh, 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 Jupiter and Paul Mercurius. Uh, 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 th those are the two uh, gods because Paul had been the chief speaker. Uh, then the priest of Juniper was before the city. And they brought out oxen and garland to the gates and would have sacrificed with the people. They begin to worship Paul and Barnabas. God has worked through Paul's life, and now they're wanting to worship Paul and Barnabas. They think that their gods come down from heaven. Wow. That's pretty flattering. God has worked through their life and it's evidence and the folks are uh, appreciative. But, but, but listen to the gospel, people. Uh, uh, is, is Paul Barnabas' stance. Which when they heard the apostles, uh, the, the apostles Paul, Barnabas and Paul heard of, they, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We are also men of like passion with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Jesus Christ, we're presenting Him, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are, are therein, who in times past in the Old Testament that suffered all nations to walk in their own way. But Jesus came and He died on the cross is what they're saying. Nevertheless, He left not Himself without witness in that He did good and gave uh, us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these uh, uh, sayings, uh, uh, scarce restrained, uh, they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Seems like things are getting good. But let's read the next verse. 
And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul, drove him out of the city, supposing that he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him and came unto the city, the next day he departed uh, uh, with, uh, with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystria and Iconium and Antioch. Let's just stop right there. Wow. Talk about a roller coaster ride that Paul and Barnabas is on. They have experienced what God has called them to do, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, give too much information. They went out, they were preaching to, to those who are at Lystria. They found someone who was laying from his mother's womb. The faith that was in his heart met the message of the gospel. Paul prayed over him. He was healed. It was evidence throughout town. And so they want to worship him. They're, they're confused. And Paul tells them the truth of Jesus Christ in the, uh, before the cross. Uh, uh, he allowed you to walk in your own way. But the message of the cross is, is that you need to repent of your sins. And you need to follow Jesus Christ. As he's preaching the gospel, Jews come in, and all of a sudden they begin to work against Paul and Barnabas. And probably over some period of time, they had Paul taken and stoned, and they took him out of the city, left for dead. Can you imagine? That's how they responded to Paul. They didn't do it to Barnabas, maybe because Paul was the one who was, who was the head speaker. Uh, and, and Brother Eli, they took him out and left him for dead. There he was. I'm asking you, have you ever been down but not out? There is Paul. He is down, but he is not out for the count. Amen. He is not out for the count. Amen. Not yet. The people thought that they were, that they were gods. They were, they, they, uh, uh, the Jews come in and won them over. Despite their obedience to preach the gospel, Paul suffered tremendously. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're not ever going to get down. Doesn't mean that you're never going to experience persecution or suffering. Uh, Paul did. Paul did. Why not us? So here it is. That outside the city, yeah, they 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 stole them. They took them. Uh, they took them out. They left them for dead. Amen. The next day, uh, uh, however, he was able to get up and leave for Lystria. What was the thing that gave him the help to get up? Amen. When he was feeling so down, he must have been feeling pretty bad. He must have been looking bad, brother David. That they thought he was dead. They took him out, and left him go. Let's look at a few things. What helped him? What helped him get back up and start moving the next day? What helped him go back and for those who had stoned him and left him for dead, what helped him go back and with love <coughs> preach the gospel? I think these are important things for us to know because we get to the same places in life. The very first thing is, I believe, it's Paul's conviction. It was not only his conviction, and I'll talk more about his conviction later, but it was his conversion. If you look back at, 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 at Acts chapter number 9, you'll read about Paul, uh, so, this man named Saul, who uh, later God renamed him Paul, and you'll find him on the road to Damascus. And you'll find that there he is on the road to Damascus, and there's a great light that shines round about him, and he's, and he's blinded. And he said, Who art thou? And Jesus spoke, I am Christ. Why, 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 why do you, uh, why, why, why do you uh, uh, kick against me? Why, 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 do you, uh, why do you work so hard against me? Now, all the time when Christ was dealing with Saul, this man Paul, on the road to Damascus, he was dealing with another man. His name was Ananias. And he said to Ananias, I'm going to have someone for you to go to. And he heard, Paul, the persecutor, I don't want to go to him. God said, I want you to go to him. I have him in a particular place. I want you to go and I want you to find him. And you'll read that he goes and he finds 
fights him and when he fights him that Christ has already worked the work in his life because Ananias approaches him and says brother brother God has already saved him there's an experience in, in, in this man Saul's life that he knows that he's been changed God has washed his sins away God has set him on a new direction his life has been changed so now when he's left outside the city of, of Lystra, half dead, he's feeling pretty down. What's the thing that makes him get back up? Because he knows that he's had a conversion in Jesus Christ, and it gives him strength and ability to know that I can get back up. Can I tell you that when we know our names is written in the Lamb's book of life, when we know that God has made a change in us, that we don't live life to ourselves, but we live it for God, it gives us the ability when we are feeling down to pick ourselves back up and find strength and encouragement knowing that God has given us restoration and God has given us a salvation experience. We have a relationship with God and when all life is stacked against us, our name is still written in the greatest book that has ever been written in by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's wrote our names. How can we get back up when life has just treated us at the worst? Someone has mistreated us when things aren't going well. Folks, that's why we need to know that we're saved. We need to know that we've asked Him in our life and that we've met with Him and we've been changed. This, this Saul, uh, uh, Saul was changed to Paul. Not only his name, but everything about his life radically changed because Christ had saved him. When we know that our life has been radically changed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we're not the old person we used to be. We don't respond in a fleshly, worldly way, but we respond through the Spirit of God. When we begin to feel down, the thing that gets us back up is knowing that our name is in the Lamb's book of life. No matter if anybody says anything against us, mistreats us, misrepresents us, even if we've been in the wrong, amen, and, and things uh, I haven't turned out the way we want, to know our name is in the Lamb's book of life is how that we can get back up. Because we've had a conversion. We've had a conversion. Have you had a conversion in your life? It'll make it the difference that you can get back up on the worst day. Not only is it knowing that Paul had a conversion, but Paul had a conviction. Paul knew this. If you read in Philippians chapter number one, you'll read that he knew that God had appointed him for the defense of the gospel. He knew that God had placed his life at the right time that he could defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then if you read on down through the book of Philippians, you'll read this wonderful verse. And let me just turn there. That, that we all love. Philippians chapter number 4. Verse number 13. For it is God which works in you both to will and to do His good will. His good pleasure. In verse number 13 of chapter number 4, He says, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing uh, I, I, I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things uh, which are before, pressing toward the prize for the mark. And he goes on down to say this in, in chapter number 4, verse number 13, that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Do we have a conviction in our life that even on our worst day when we are feeling down, that we can get back up because we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Amen. We can face the day. Amen. We have the strength to make it because we can do all things 
through Him. Amen. God equips us with the strength to help ourselves even when we're feeling discouraged. I can do all things. Not only uh, through His conversion, not only through His conviction, but through His confidence. Amen. He was confident. Uh, and, and, and Romans chapter number 8. Let me just read this to you. He said, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things uh, present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we have the confidence of knowing that even the worst day, even the falling down, amen, does not separate separate us from God. It gives us the strength. It gives us the grace. Amen. That we can get back up. Amen. When we're feeling down. You may say I feel sad today. My health is not the best. I've been done wrong. You know how you can get back up? Because we know that no matter where we are in life, that we are not going to be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Look at the life of Job. He said, the worst thing that can happen to me is I can die. But even in death, I know that I shall see my Redeemer, and I know that He lives. Amen. You've heard me tell this before, but some of you are uh, honored to know Brother Brother Henry Schomper. And many years ago, early on in my ministry, he was on hospice care. And, and I went back on a Friday afternoon. I got off work. I went by his home to visit with him. He was laying in his bed. His body, uh, the cancer had just spread. And, and, and it was nothing more than really a skeleton with skin over it. And so he wasn't able really to respond. But I prayed with him. I would talk with him. And, and, and I would talk with Sister Schomper there. And so I was reading a, a passage passage of, uh, from the Word of God, and I read what I just read to you, amen, for I am persuaded uh, that, uh, that, that neither death nor life, amen, shall separate us from the love of God, and I saw this body that could no, no longer articulate its feelings to me, amen, no longer even open his eyes and look the way that, that, that maybe I would like him to, but I saw these hands just raised in worship to God when he heard the word that nothing will separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can I tell you, even on our worst day, when we have the confidence that nothing is going to separate us from the love of God, not depression, not bad uh, credit record, not finances, it's not coming up, even the loss of, uh, the, uh, of the nearest and dearest, it's not going to get us down because nothing separates me from God. That's how I get back up. So in the middle of your work week, in the middle of craziness and chaos, understanding that even in the worst of situations, it does not separate us from God. So our conversion, our convictions, that we know that He has a plan for us, our confidence of God being there regardless, it helps us get back up. So instead of staying down and feeling sorry for ourselves, we've just got to remember the love and the promises of God. It helps us wake <clears throat> up. It will motivate us. It will empower us. The fourth thing is Paul's courage. Paul had great courage. And in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 5, Now he who, was wrought, who has wrought us for the self, same thing as God, who also has given us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. How do we get courage? Let me be transparent for a moment. 
There's been times where I've got a telephone call, I get a page. And I know that I've got to deal with situations that are beyond my control and beyond my fixing, beyond what I know that I can humanly do within myself. So some time ago I adapted this prayer to say, God, give me the courage to listen and to face those things that I don't want. Paul didn't want to be stoned at Lystria. Paul didn't want to have that experience of doing what's right and being misunderstood by those who he's preaching to. It was unfair that the Jews came and gave bad word on Paul and Barnabas. It was, it, but, but the courage is that as unfair as it is, this is the way that it is. And so the courage that Paul said, he said this, he said, I, I know this, that, 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 that when I'm in this body, I'm absent from being at home with the Lord. Amen. So I know that if I ever leave this body, and when I do leave this body, I'm going to be present with God. But he said this, I can't walk by the things that I see. i got to walk by faith. Amen. Sometimes I have to trust. When the sky is dark, i got to trust that the sun is still shining above there. Amen. When, when the night is black, i got to have confidence that the sun will come up in the morning and still be shining. Amen. So when we're given the news or, or we're in the situation where we don't like to be, that's where faith has got to kick in. And though we don't see it with our physical eyes, and even if we don't feel it, amen, we've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Being able to say to the mountain, be thou removed to cast into the sea. And so the courage of being able to get up and say, I'm not going to see things as they are, but I'm going to have faith that God is going to change those things. That gives us courage to get back up. Do you believe today that we can live a life of faith and trust an unknown future to a known God. That's what gives us courage to get back up. You may say, I'm not a very courageous person, <clears throat> but God wants you to be. God wants you to be. And God equips you to be. You can be courageous. Paul's commitment was amazing because he knew that God had called him into the ministry. He knew that maybe temporarily he had a reason for feeling down, and obviously he did. He'd been stolen, taken out, left for dead. But he knew that his temporary situation could not last long. Because his permanent fix was that God was going to change it. Folks, it's okay to once in a while fall down and out. But that cannot be your permanent dwelling place. The fix has to be to know that God is going to change it. And we have legitimate reasons to know that we cannot stay down. If you have the facts of God's Word, you know that I cannot stay down because God does not give me the liberty to stay down. I am committed and confident in Him that He is going to pick me up. The last thing that I want to look at is, is His companions. He wasn't there by Himself. There was Barnabas. You read our text. You read that he had been left for dead. How be it, verse number 20 says, as the disciples stood around about him, they, those who, who, who had really heard the message in Lystria and sunk their teeth into it and really changed their lives through the blood of Jesus Christ by putting their faith in him, 
they really came to Paul's rescue. There were some legitimate Christians that, that, that turned out in this experience. They may have been the minority. Maybe they didn't have uh, the ability to stand up against what was happening, the Jews and their lying and, and the stoning and the flogging that was taking place. However, they were still there and they were still trusting God. And when they drug Paul outside the city, there they were around about him, praying for him and rallying for him and chanting for him that he would get back up and guess what he did as believers uh, uh, we've been studying on Tuesday evening that we need to be aware of our surroundings we need to be acute on other people and how that they're responding amen because it's our responsibility to help them get back up because two are so much better than one and God places us there in that companionship. So what should we do when we feel discouraged? What should we do? And I'm closing. I don't know, Sister Sandy, if you want to come to me or not. I'm sorry, I should have asked you before church and that was on my mind. My wife told me to do that and I forgot. So what do we do when we're feeling down? We remember our conversion. That Christ has saved us. And because of who we are in Christ, we won't stay down. Not only because of our conversion, but because of our conviction. We have a conviction of knowing that God is with us and working for us. The confidence that we have in Him that that nothing is going to separate us from the love of God, not even this moment that makes us go down and the circumstances surrounding it. Because our courage comes from trusting God. We can face that which seems like hell itself. We can face it because our courage comes from God. You can't get back up. You can make it. Our commitment for Christ is what drives us. And if you look around you this morning, you see we have a lot of folks out sick, but we still have a lot of companions. It says you can make it. We say, oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. There are those who are blazing the trail that Jesus blazed before you. You can make it. And then there's a company in heaven that says, you can make it. It's worth it. So whether you're feeling a little down today, or whether these are just tools for your toolbox for the days that you feel down, I want you to know you're equipped. It's okay to feel down. It's not okay to stay down. Christ has not given us reason to stay down. But he has given us courage to get back up. Would you come? Would you apply these tools to your life? If that's where you're at this morning, you can get back up. Or if this is just something you need to store for the future, ask the Holy Ghost to make it real. Then he stores it in your heart. Would you kind of rest?
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 